With your vote, we're going to defeat crooked Joe Biden. We're going to take back our country. We're going to make America great again. Since 2016, you and I have been in this battle side by side and together, and we've been taking on the entire corrupt system in Washington like no one has ever done before. So we are live in Des Moines, Iowa. Donald Trump in his element blasting Joe Biden. And now Democrats are getting off the sidelines in Iowa with the Biden campaign sending surrogates there. Uh, to uh, make the case for a re-election. Sean Hannity is here as well. He joins us now. Thanks for getting up early, even though I, I don't know if you sleep. Get, getting up early? Right, what I, time I, what I, do you I, think I, I sleep in? I, I, I sleep hey, like five hours a uh, night question maximum. For you. Yeah. Uh, first Iowa caucus, 1996? <laughs> okay. Really? You got to tell everyone. Dole Kemp, what was it? I don't even remember, but I, I, first of all, I love coming to Iowa. Number one, I love the people of Iowa. Think about it. They... they they provide so much food for this entire country and the world, and we now know they do. They have these really rough winters that they live through. They're just amazing people. They're kind. They're nice. I love the fact that they're engaged. They're showing up. They want to hear the candidates, um, and they care about the country. And I think Joe Biden made a huge mistake by by taking that, Iowa. It's interesting, right? Because the, the head of the GOP party here in Iowa, yeah. they they, they want to beat the old record. Don't know if they will or not, but they want to beat the very record for that reason. With twenty, because they feel 20, like Democrats gave him back of the hand. Listen, twenty uh, below zero, and they break the record. That would be. That would be. It, it will be amazing. Would be. I do think it's very interesting to watch this. Biden campaign try to contend with what they did not anticipate. I don't believe so. I think that they thought President Trump would not be on the scene and they would they would be able to just trounce anybody on the issue of abortion. But the Obama team, they've picked up on this. They're worried. And this is what they said to Politico. Um, this is the real reason for the Obama camp divide with Biden that even as the Biden campaign takes steps to build out its team, there remains anxiety amongst Democrats due to the fact that the president has never had to run a ground game before of this magnitude. I read that article. I found it interesting, as you did. And apparently before Christmas, Obama was in the White House having lunch with, with Joe Biden and was trying to lay out for him what he did in 2012. That would have, that's his reelect year. Uh, and they feel he has no organization here. I don't think they understand the magnitude of what they did to both Iowa and New Hampshire by bypassing both states to go straight to South Carolina. Here's, here's Joe's bigger problem. If Maureen Dowd of the New York Times, if David Axelrod, James Carville, Van Jones, all these prominent Democratic names that have influence within that party are so openly critical of, of his reelection, or even attempted re-election, something is going on that's a lot more, that is a lot deeper. And I would, you know, there's a lot of questions whether he will still be on that ticket in November. I, I you can't don't say with certainty. think that John Kerry will. leaving the administration to go work on the campaign is going to answer okay. the mail on well, that? I, the fa I read that in the article too, and I'm laughing because I'm thinking I voted for the 87 billion before I voted against it. <laughs> um, I, I mean, he, so we have Hillary Clinton, and you have John Kerry two presidential losers as two of your top advisors now wanting to get involved in your campaign. Wouldn't it be my choice? Yeah, well, I tell you, you saw the numbers I put up there oh, about 15 the minutes ago. This is Quentin Folks, Biden deputy campaign manager, about the challenge there and what they need to do. I will say that our campaign understands the urgency. We are rising to the occasion to meet the moment. We are doing what we need to do to make sure we're going to win uh, in November. Um, and that's not dictated by one poll or any given moment in time. That's dictated by putting down a plan and building an infrastructure uh, that's going to make sure that we're competitive uh, and victorious in November of 2024. So, we mentioned the poll numbers. They're not good. Uh, you, you, you want to like, like put a Democratic brain on for a second and say, who do we want to compete against? Do we want to compete against Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley? I think Joe Biden. Vivek Ramaswamy. I think they think, if you look at their campaign, it's, it's very predictable where it's going. We're going to say democracy is in peril. We'll talk about January 6th. We'll talk about Donald Trump. We'll talk about abortion. Republicans need to be very careful on this issue. I think it really hurt them in 22. Um, and I've explained that in detail on my show. Uh, and then they're going to go to the old playbook. You've lived through the playbook, you know, in the, your years in the Bush White House, and that's Republicans are racist and sexist and Hitler. misogynist, Hitler, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, transphobic, and they want dirty air and water, and they want granny and grandpa to die. That's basically their plan. And what they can't do, the biggest problem that, well, let's say it's Donald Trump. 
his big challenge will be to get the focus on Joe's policies and the question of, are you better off than you were four years ago? You know, what, has, what policies has Joe Biden implemented that you can say are successful? You want to talk about foreign policy, war in Europe, war in the Middle East, and China on the move, and China aggressively challenging the United States. You want to talk about the borders? I don't think they want to talk about borders. Bidenomics, that message did not resonate for nine months. Why would it you know, start it, resonating now? He felt as if he had a rather sober approach to all of that in our town hall last week with Brett and Martha. I thought and that. Now, some people are thinking if you can continue that same tone, more people will listen to you. It's interesting. I, you can watch Donald Trump at his rallies, and then I've done a number of town halls with him. I watched the Brett and Martha town hall, and I find Donald Trump is much better in that environment because you see a different side of him. The side, but the, the person Donald Trump that I've known for 30 years, that side is more, it's more accessible to people. He can be, he's obviously smart, he's well informed, he's funny. articulate, funny, he's charming, yeah. um, was very warm to, you know, when, when somebody would ask a question after the question, thank you, ma'am, for the question. Mm -hmm. Um, versus, say, a rally situation where you tend to just throw out red meat to the base. Regardless, what a contrast yeah. with Joe Biden. Well, I mean, one knows what day of the week it is and one doesn't. That's a pretty dramatic difference. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. If you go back to 2020, mm -hmm. I was under heavy fire, you know, for daring to say he was weak, frail, and a cognitive mess. The reason that David Axelrod and James Carville and Van Jones and Maureen Dowd hitting him hard on ignoring his daughter and his granddaughter in Arkansas is because they see what we all see. The whole country sees the decline is significant. And they won't quite come out and say that part, but I don't think 2020 hiding in the basement, COVID, all that's off the table this time. Well, you saw that cognitive report, right, on ABC poll? I did. That's, that cognitive well, report is not good. Oh, I missed that. It was yeah. below. By the way, it took right, four years for everyone to catch up to my show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're both going to get to be on your show tonight, I think. I know. Isn't yeah. that awesome? Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for being here. Okay. Yeah, uh, well, I want everyone to know, though, because the Pemmer board used to be the Hannity board. Well, I don't see board. you standing over there. No, I, don't so, know, I mean, if you want a piece of it. Want to join him tonight? I'm so technologically <laughs> deficient, I can't run I that you board. Can, you can figure it out. Great to have you, Sean. Yeah, thank you, Sean. I love you guys. I watch every day. Thank, thank you. you. See you in about 12 hours. Yes, sir. Dig it.